Alright folks, well if you've seen the title of the video, you'll know what we're going to do here. I'm going to make a quick little video on how to prepare mountain oysters. No fancy wine sauce, there's not too many videos on YouTube of doing this, so I thought I'd make a nice, simple, straight up fried mountain oysters. Uh, with commercially available products, something easy to do, I'm going to take you through the whole process, skinning, slicing, and frying. Okay, so, here we go. There's what you're going to get. Now that skin is really tough, so you're going to have to get that off. Uh, the longer knife, the better. I uh, need a real sharp one. That skin's tough, um, but the sharper the better. I use a smooth steel, not serrated. So anyway, let's get going with that, and I'll show you how to skin these things. first is this one they did it while they uh, before they packaged it but anyway it's a little deep but just go through your skin all the way from one side to the other same thing anyway once you get that going what you need to do is just start that skin don't worry if you lose a little meat here at first no big deal you want to just loosen that skin enough where you can, about a half inch, where you can get a good grip on it with your finger, fingernails, and loosen it up. Now, you, this is very important. You want to take your knife and put it at an angle. I like to use a long knife so it goes all the way through one shot. You don't have to wiggle back and forth. But get that skin with your fingernails and just... That skin's pretty tough, so it's really hard to cut. And just cut in an angle. And try to keep force that knife down onto the skin as close as you can. And just simply slide it back and forth. Pull on the skin as you go. And basically what you're doing is rolling it right out of the skin with that knife. Quick and easy. I've seen a couple videos on here where the guy was really struggling. That's easy. I'm not going to do two of them. Like I said, cut one side to the other. Get that skin loose and just take that knife at an angle. Slice back and forth and work it off. See, and I almost lost no meat doing that. Alright, now what you're going to want to do with this, once you get it cleaned off like that, just check for any little bits of white skin that might be left. And just peel that off two little pieces nothing big then what you're going to want to do is soak this in salt water I do them overnight you can do them for at least a couple hours but just take a bowl of water put some heavy you know some table salt kind of heavy in there and just let them soak that'll help draw the blood out now I'm going to go to slicing so what I like to do is freeze them first and I'm going to pause this video we'll come back and get that going for you Okay, so this one I have in the freezer. <coughs> Sharper knife the better again. I'm going to use this one. I got it sharpened up. But uh, now you just go from the long ways. And I like to slice mine fairly thin. Kind of like potato chip style maybe, if you want to call it that. Uh, you can go as thick as you want. That's your choice. But see if you can. If you freeze these, they cut so much easier. Some guys put them in boiling water. I don't do that. I just think that might make them help. These are very tender when they're done this way. Uh, some people say they're kind of tough. I don't know. Maybe if the boiling water causes that uh, by almost starting the cooking process. But pretty simple. And that's how you do it right there. That's about how thick. No thicker than that's what I usually do with mine. But it's up to your choice. Now, what I usually do with these is tenderize them first. So, we'll go to that, and then I'll show you the breading process, and we'll get cooking. Alright, so, let me zoom this out. So, now I just take a little meat tenderizing hammer, and take the little pointy end. Not rocket science. These I have already uh, thawed out. These things are very... If you've seen in that, they're very, very spongy. So they're they're hard to slice. They roll around. And uh, kind of like...
like trying to slice a loaf of bread with a dull knife. So I freeze them. It makes it so much easier. Anyway, I'm not going to flip these over. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just flip them. Same thing with the other side. You don't have to beat the hell out of them. Just uh, whack it a few times for the tenderizer. Flip them. Do the same thing. Now the breading I'm going to use is just something very simple. Easy to find, commercially available. I got some chicken fry, pre-seasoned, and panko breadcrumbs. Now, don't add, don't go quite 50-50. I go about one-third panko to my whatever breading I'm using. Mix her up a little bit here. And that's about it, folks. You can throw a little salt and pepper in there, whatever you want. Up to you. I'm just doing a video to show you how to very simply get these things fried up. Uh, like I said, the videos I've seen on here <laughs> can't really make sense out of much of them anyway. So, we're going to pause this, uh, get everything set up, and go right to the frying process. So I use a, just a little beaten egg and some milk, just a dribble of milk in a beaten egg, and roll them in the breading. I'm going to do just a few here, and then uh, we'll do a little sampling. Make sure your grease is getting hot. Set that batter and that breading really fast so it doesn't fall off. Since these are really thin, they don't have to cook very long. Just enough to get that bread in good and golden brown. That's about all you need. And once you start seeing the blood come through, just give them a flip. Been in there maybe not quite a minute, about a minute. Gonna let them go just here another minute or two. I'm gonna get the plate to set them on. Pretty good, starting to float them little ones. Gonna turn my heat up a little bit. Doesn't take long, just a few minutes. He's probably done. These little guys are floating. Just enough to get that bread in good and brown is about all this takes. Alright, I'm going to pause this, get the rest of these out of here, and then we'll uh, talk about them a little more as we uh, try them. Well, you can dip these things in pretty much anything you want. Ketchup, barbecue sauce, your choice. Sour, uh, horseradish, whatever. I don't have to usually dip them in anything. I kind of like them just the way they are, but uh, they are pretty good with sriracha sauce. So that's what we're going to use today. So here they are. Little... Fried Mountain Oysters. Doesn't look scary. Wonder if it'll taste scary. I'm gonna try one plain first, just to show you. As tender as can be. 
I kind of, I don't know. My girlfriend disagrees with me, but I think almost like a chicken gizzard taste. I mean, but they're not tough at all. I mean, we don't have to pull them. They just bite them right in half. Very good. When I started researching this, because I had them 20 years ago for the first time in my life. I said I'd never, ever eat them. But I got got to drinking and got talked into it. And I ate them, and they were really good. So, a friend of mine stopped by. Finished eating. A friend of mine stopped by. Told me where I could get them. So, went and bought a 10-pound box, and here we are. Cut them a little thicker, they're a little tougher, not too bad. Still kind of hot. But, I hope you enjoyed the video. Try to make it as simple as possible. Skin, soak, freeze, slice, tenderize, if you want, and fry. So, I'm going to enjoy the rest of these, and I'm going to sign out for now, folks. See ya.